Mackie and Judd Declan producing here uh, on YouTube and via podcast. And let's first, before we dive into who the next fall off a cliff Viking could be, I know that it's not ideal that players fall off the cliff like Xavier Rhodes, but if we can sit here and we can call it early, we can help the Vikings figure out where to pivot so they don't run a washed up player out there for 16 games. But a quick thank you to Federated Mutual Insurance Company. Federated has been helping businesses in the state of Minnesota for over 100 years. And this is not the year to be wishy-washy or unsure about your insurance company. So if you're a business owner during this pandemic four-month, five-month period here, and you want trusted resources and a great company to stand behind your business, federatedinsurance.com. Find out more, federatedinsurance.com. All right, gentlemen, let's do this. You like that? This is a Judd Zolgad masterminded topic here. <laughs> Shocking, I, love I know. It. I Shocking. love it. Uh, always looking ahead for you know what, what might be on the horizon. The that, that's what Yes, because it, it is in. It's the fall off the cliff. Xavier Rhodes Award. So I'm oh, calling it the we're Roadies. Calling these, the, we're the calling it the Roadies. Got it. Yes. Okay. Welcome to <laughs> the first edition of the Roadies. Who's going to fall off the cliff in 2020? So. Xavier Rhodes went from being one of the best defensive players in all of football and one of the best cornerbacks in Vikings history. He yes. was a shutdown cornerback. The roads were closed yes. for like three the, years. And then they weren't. And then he turned into a punchline. Actually, I think he had two different punchlines. One, if a play didn't go his way, he would be injured and then like have to leave for five minutes and then come back. Like He always came back. And that started a while ago. Yeah, that probably that started, started pre-him really falling off the cliff. So that's definitely a Xavier Rhodes-ism. Yes, sir. And then the other Xavier Rhodes-ism was him just being like six steps behind a wide receiver while a 40-yard pass sailed through the air. And then saying, I thought I had safety help. Yeah. Where was Harrison Smith? I don't know. And Harrison's like, I don't know. I'm, dude, I was dude, I'm, doing my job. I'm freelancing. And I'm, really, <laughs> and I'm really, really good, so don't blame me. I'm just over here freelancing, man. What do you want from me? Uh, so who do you think, as we look at the Vikings roster, who do you think are the candidates to potentially – become Xavier Rhodes looking over a cliff. Who are the guys that we should look out for on behalf of the Vikings? Okay, so the the problem I thought with Rhodes was there wasn't necessarily a replacement for for him. Like, ideally, last year, you just see he's cooked, right? He stinks. And I'm not sure that you release him at that point in time, but you definitely have a plan B that you're confident in. And, And the Vikings did have a plan B, and they did bench him at times, but I never felt like they were completely confident in doing that. Um, so I'm going to give you one here that I think is obvious, but I also think there is a huge plan B, which is going to turn into a plan A. And so this is a guy who very well could completely fall off the cliff, but he's going to be replaced quickly and sufficiently with a very good player. Kyle Rudolph, okay? Okay. If you look at Kyle, and I'm not trying to imply he can't catch some touchdown passes, especially no, those hands in the going red anywhere. zone. So those hands are still good. In fact, if you could actually just take like Rudolph's hands and put them on this like, gross. I don't, don't like what you're doing. someone Irv's else's body. body. Yeah, I, I don't, honestly, I don't. No, Irv doesn't need them. He's good. But I mean, if you could st- stick him on like a blocking tight end's body. But Kyle went from in 2018. <laughs> Rhett Ellison's like, I'll take him. Yeah, these are great hands, and my dad approves too. Um, Kyle went from 64 receptions for 634 yards and four touchdowns in 2018, gentlemen, uh, in 16 games, to 16 games last year in which his receptions went from 64 to 39. His uh, yardage and catches went from 634 to 367, and his touchdowns actually went up from four to six, okay? But he is what now? He's 30, 31. 31, But it feels like an old 31. He's going to be 31 on November 9th of this year. Um, it does. He's been around a long time. He, he's beaten up. He's played well, but he's beaten up. So I think there's a very good chance. I think that we should not, not be surprised if he goes off the cliff in 2020. But the nice thing is what you and Declan said. Irv Smith looks like he could be great. So I think the Vikings can't be afraid to make that transition even more abundantly clear this year than they did Last year, and when Smith was in his first year, and Smith was good, but I think Smith is a potential breakout player. But I'm not going to be surprised at all if the years and the punishment playing tight end and blocking and basically getting beat up over an extended period of time uh, catches up to Kyle. And by the end of this year, we basically say it's been a good run yeah. here. Um, you've been a good player in the community, you are awesome. 
uh, but it's time. And I, yeah, just one more thing on the Irv Smith front. You know, part of the problem with Xavier Rhodes was the Vikings' handling of it. There was a little bit of denial initially, and then, and then eventually he kind of, you know, second half of the season last year, and for sure down the stretch was put into some reduced roles. But it felt like they were late to pull the trigger on. Hey, it just isn't working out the way that we yes. wanted it to. It's not you. It's your body. Like it's your. Well, it it's, is. It's father time. It is, it is you. But right. Too bad. <laughs> we like you still, but just not for seventy snaps a game. And I think it's it's harder to make that decision when there's not a clear cut person to step into the role. Right. And the Vikings have had some good young cornerbacks to replace Davy Rhodes, but it was never like all right. Step aside, Xavier, because there is a stud waiting to step into your position. I think all of us would agree that we'd be shocked if Irv Smith wasn't a really highly productive pass-catching tight end in the NFL for the next eight years. Yeah, They just have a dude who can step in and look like a wide receiver in a tight end's body. So yep. don't make the same mistake by, I don't know, Rudolph looks like he's losing another step. Like Rudolph, as your red zone, yellow gloves going up in the air is a great role for him right. between the twenties to me between the twenties it's Irv Smith mm-hmm. let that guy catch a pass mm-hmm. and leapfrog over a linebacker and a safety and gain 20 yards mm-hmm. so uh who yeah, else Declan, who else could be on this list to me and I, I hope this isn't true but I, I really worry about Adam Thielen falling off a cliff wow. especially after his injury wow um, coming up on age 30 he's by from the time here Declan. comes here Oh, bite your tongue, here? bite your tongue, Declan. He's from. He's a local kid. Okay. Oh, really? I didn't. Oh, know. he's a great undrafted. Gotcha. Do you know where, okay. where he went to school? The amount of people. The last time we did this bit was like three months ago when we did the. Did you guys know he went to Mankato? Like, bit. You're stupid. We literally had like fifteen people say, "I'm not following this channel anymore." You guys didn't know he was yeah. from Minnesota. You know who does? No. no PA. He knew. We crowned Adam Thielen the first ever Mr. Mankato. By yep. the way, yeah. I'll have you and presented him with a trophy and which a styrofoam cooler full of funyuns, which he then threw down and didn't take. Yeah, you guys can keep that. Uh, we don't need that. That's okay. Um, I got to eat Funyuns yeah. in the American hotel room later that night. Which was it great. Was a great night. I miss my kiddo. Uh, I'm a little worried from Thielen falling off just from his injury history from last season and the fact that people are going to be keying in on him. Now, I, I think Kubiak is a great offensive schemer. He basically, you're taking like the Texans offense that he did with Andre Johnson and making him that number one receiver. And Andre Johnson was a great receiver into his 30s. I just worry that because of his injury history, that he's going to start to fall off a cliff and the fact teams are going to be uh, keying in on him. So I'm a little worried that he might be Adam, might be a respectable wide receiver. Is he going to be 113, 90 receptions for 1,400 yards like we saw in 2017, 18? I don't know. So I'm curious Boy. on that. So my gut on Adam Thielen said, well, part of it's age. Like, you know, it took him a few years to break into the league as a starter. So it wasn't like he was a starter when he was 22. So I believe Adam Thielen is 29 or 30 years old yeah, right now. He'll, as he'll we be sit here. 30 in a week. Uh-oh. Okay, so uh oh. So he's definitely like from this point forward, he's he's always been faster than people give him credit for. Mm-hmm. People always play the the cliche white receiver, like good route runner, but not the most <laughs> athletic guy. It's like if you watched Adam Thielen, he's ridiculously yeah, athletic. He's unreal. But that athleticism will only decrease from this point going forward in terms of like his speed, his separation in in straight line down the field. But I where I disagree is I think even as some of those things due to injury and age go away, I think he's going to be a guy that can just find a place to get open on third and eight. I think his route running and his precision are going to still be there. So he has enough technical skills and abilities that I just think it's a little early for him to fall off a cliff unless unless it's injury-related, if he just can't stay healthy. What I do worry about is, all right, Justin Jefferson has a chance to be great, but he's a rookie, and he has, to this point, not played in any 11-on-11 workouts. This is he, the problem. Yep. If Adam Thielen does go down with an injury for a month like we've seen, what the hell happened? Like, BC Johnson's your number one wide receiver at that point. But what's the what's the attention that's going to be paid to what Dex said to Thielen based on Jefferson? Like I think we all think Jefferson's a top pick. He's a first round pick, and he's going to get here, and he's going to be great, and he might be great eventually. But he's had no camps, right? And and yes, he's he's gone and uh, caught passes from Kirk at some high school. That's fine. But when he's going up against top flight defensive backs. And they are like, hey, you know what? For at least an X amount of games, we can cover him basically man. So let's throw two guys on 19. That's my question. Like, does Thielen – Thielen's really good and he's really smart, but Diggs took so much pressure off him. And probably it went both ways there. If Jefferson is going to, you know, 
routinely struggle, which would not be unusual for, let's say, six to eight games, does so much attention get paid to Thielen that it affects his play greatly? That's my that's that's my thought or potential concern uh, as far as the first part of a year where we do not know yeah. what's going to well, happen. Well, I think he's still good enough if he's healthy, you know, for 16 games. I, st- I, I still think he is skilled enough and good enough and reliable enough to be um, among, like, the top 10 to 20, I would say 10 to, like, 15 wide receivers in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And that group of guys, if they're, if you look at some of the examples around the league where it's, like, a team has one of those guys and then not a lot of other things proven, mm-hmm. not really a bona fide, like, second stud wide receiver, those guys don't decrease in production. They wind up getting targeted 160 times and catching 100 passes for 1,300 yards and touchdowns. So I actually think there's a better chance that Thielen puts up, I'm not going to say career numbers, because 2018, 113 catches for 1,300 yards and nine touchdowns will be tough to pass. But I think he gets back to like 90 to 100 catches, 1,200 yards, et cetera. Okay. So, all right. Who, who's your guy? Here's my guy. This is a guy that has had, first of all, this is a guy that weighs over 300 pounds. And so, in general, guys who weigh over 300 pounds, their bodies break down, et cetera, right? He's 31 years old. And over the last three years, and he's going to be uh, 32 years old in like week 13, late November, early December, all right? And this guy has, has been listed with concussion, ankle, and back problems all in the last three years. Sounds like a wrestler. Riley Reef. Oh, sure. Riley Reef, yep. had, he's six foot six, three hundred plus pounds, and he's had he's been banged up. He grinds through plays with injuries. He's missed a handful of games in his three years with the Vikings, but he he's a grinder and he'll he'll play through stuff. But at some point that catches up to you, and I just feel like you know for him, the cliff is closer because he's not an elite left tackle. So if there's any decrease in health or if age catches up it's going to look a lot worse for a guy that's just kind of a league average left tackle. Like, he could be put on a swivel quickly. You're saying he, if he things could turn erode. into a disaster. So be ready with Ezra Cleveland or some plan B at left tackle for a, for a 31, 32-year-old guy who has had concussion, ankle, and back problems over the last three years. This is This segment and this show is all about just making sure the Vikings have a plan B for the next Xavier Rhodes and I think Riley Reef should be on that. So list. you you are basically Phil Mackey telling us that th- this could be the year that Riley Reef gets Kirk Cousins hurt. And I mean, if Sean you want to Mannion take it to has that to level. play because Reef has whiffed on a uh, right end who has swiveled, turned him into a swivel, and now Cousins is patting the ball in the pocket because he's not quite sure what to do, and he gets hit from behind, and his head snaps back, and now he's got a concussion, and Reef is on the ground bleeding, Boy, and then and Sean Mannion comes into the game, and then he's got to start the next game. Unfortunately, it turns out that uh, he tests positive for COVID, and so he's out, and Kyle Slaughter is re-signed. Uh, yeah, and then all of that strife leads to some personal problems at home on the home front for both Mannion and Kirk Cousins, oh, no. and their relationship suffers. So I am saying that, yes, that Ra- Riley, Riley, Riley Reef's erosion will lead to marital problems with Sean Mannion, is what I'm saying. Time yeah. for a trip to the old pizza ranch. <laughs> if that happens, Julian Kirk can go there, talk out the problems, because uh, the buffet is open. So thoughts on Riley Reef? Am I... My over, no, I think it's a good panicking one. there. No, 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 if no. He was 27 years old. Here's I would not say this, but people will say, "Well, Mackie, he already sucks. He right. doesn't. That's the most important thing. No, he, he does doesn't suck. suck. Yeah. He he is a league average solid left tackle. And look, if you want to see a guy that sucks, go back and watch T.J. Clemmings' film because he was terrible. And that's what happens when a guy is terrible. Um, so for those who immediately say, oh, Mackie, he reefs no good to start with. No, he is pretty good. Correct. He's he just plays not a crucial position. He's just not great. Um, but yes, at, at his age and his history of injury problems and playing through th- those, which obviously does not help you long term. I think it's very solid. I think it's very solid that, uh, that, um, Ezra Cleveland should be on DEFCON, it goes up, right? Yeah. Def- yeah DefCon one is the worst. Yes. I just learned this the other the other like five, a year ago. Like people Wait, say is, De- five, is five the best? No, people no, no, say no. no people well, say DefCon five when they're like full on panic mode. Okay, so DefCon, DefCon one is full on panic is mode. Full on panic okay. Mode. Ezra Cleveland should be DefCon two. Ezra okay. Cleveland should be Declan DefCon two. You're saying what? That's two. the next step to nuclear war. Yes. 
because it's concerning. That's Con two. Yes. So I'm I'm agreeing with Phil in that it's proper to be concerned if Reef is going to be just fine for the entire 2020 season, assuming that we get through the entire okay. season. Got it. Real quick here, I did pull up just for fun here. Uh, Pro Football Focus's top blocking, pass blocking tight ends for or tight ends, uh, left tackles from last season. Okay. This also includes right tackles. But of guys who played at least fifty percent of the snaps last year, Riley Reef was twenty sixth out of it looks like seventy. Okay, a, a, yeah. as a as a pass blocker. Yeah, so he was fine. Like that's not a disaster by any means. Nope, he's um, and that again that includes left and right tackles. So. He's one of the top 25 or, or 30 pass blocking tackles in the NFL. And then uh, run blocking, or, or no, overall grade, he was 26 as well. So he's, you know, whatever. He's fine. I, I think the biggest gripe, too, is his contract. Like, if he if he made $6, 7000000 million less on that contract, I don't think people would have as big of an issue, too, with his play. Those guys always make a but ton. They do. They're, they're, yeah. they're left tackles. It's incredibly happens. important. Yeah. If right. you're six foot six and weigh 300 pounds and have played football before, you're a millionaire. Yep. You basically. Pretty miss you, Axby. Yeah. So anyway, all right. Who? Anybody? Anybody else? Before we wrap this episode here, uh, guys, I've, to be on the lookout. I've for. got one more, and and I don't see this happening. But depending on what he's asked to do, and his career, which is now, which is now six years in, I believe, or so. Anthony Barr. I don't hmm. see him going off the cliff. I really don't. But you know, I feel like he's been in neutral. Exactly. On a, exactly. On a neutral on which a is, plateau for which is what my, which is what my concern is. It's like he's in the desert. Let's say they put him in drive, and it doesn't work. <laughs> like drive doesn't work, and and so he's been in neutral for so long. It's like, but of course it it works. Shift down, and it still <laughs> does not work. Um, I am not assuring this. I'm not e- even completely concerned. But I did write him down as a potential for, I wonder if they increase his role and it doesn't work. You know, and he's just, hey, he's just okay or not okay. You remember when Anthony and he's Barr not a kid. was a fumble-forcing machine in his first couple of years? I called yes. him the linchpin of the Vikings defense at that time because his ability to do different things to me made him, at that time, the most important part of that defense. And that now is no longer even close to being the case. He only has three forced fumbles in his last four years in the NFL. Yeah. So what Let's happens? go wreak a little havoc. Go sack a quarterback, what, force a fumble. But is that there? I, I think it is, but I'm not positive. Yeah, I wouldn't put him in the category of like drop off a cliff Xavier Road style because right. I think physically he's cer- certainly I there, think it's premature but... for me to do that. Okay. So there Declan, you got, you got one more or no? No, I, I think that probably can. I, I feel like guys like Eric Kendricks and even Harrison Smith and Anthony Harris, like Her- Harrison Smith is always, I feel like we're, someone's ready to be the hot take. I'd be like, this is the year he finally drops off. This no, is the year he finally uh, drops if, off. If he's, he'll play until he's 37 if he right. wants to. Um, and safeties, and I feel like safeties is, is a position where you can go in for a long time and, and be a I successful agree. player. So I, I don't look at guys like Harris or Smith. I mean, does Harris come down to earth from being, you know, the number one PFF safety? Yes. But can he still be a top 10? Yeah. Top 15 safety? Great. Yes. I mean, ha- Harrison Smith feels like if he wants to, and if he doesn't suffer some debilitating injury, if it's just like the natural progression in his 30s, he's the type of dude I could see with a a big old beard. Uh, who's that other? Who's the safety for uh, San Diego? Eric, like an Eric, Eric Weddle, Weddle beard. You think he's going to have a. <laughs> And he's like 37 years old. Harry with that beard. I could see him 37 years old with gray, a gray beard. Gray crap coming out of his beard. Improving at the line of scrimmage, freelancing. <laughs> he is positionally sound, dude. I mean, he knows his stuff. So yeah, yeah, he's not one I'm concerned about. I do, I do think that there will come a day because he loves the sport so much where he does probably play one year too long. But he's 30 now, right? Yeah, Thir- mm-hmm. 31 or so. I would guess that day is not going to come for another seven years yeah. or something like that. Yeah. He he probably will push it, uh, but not yet. Going into his ninth year as a Minnesota Viking. Wow. It's crazy, man. Hall, Hall of Famer, Fires. right? NFL? NFL Hall of Famer? Yeah. yeah. Canton? I think so. I think so. I think he's going to Canton. I think so. He, you know, I, I'll tell you what would solidify it is hoisting a Super Bowl oh, trophy sure. would put him in for he's, sure. He's ring of honor lock, for obviously, for sure. But yeah. Hall of Fame, I don't Retires know. Number? I just don't know. Retires he also number? might still play like five 14. or six more years. Correct. So... All right, that's your panic episode of Purple Daily here. Part of the Score North Network. I'm glad I could help. And there are your 2020 roadies. (laughs) Your roadies have been given out. Uh, Judd Zolgad special there. Don't forget about our other podcast, Mackie and Judd, which you can find on Apple, Spotify, and scorenorth.com. 
And that's where you can find Twins, Wild, and uh, other discussions about other Minnesota sports teams. We mix in some Vikings there, too. Write that down on Wednesdays and action movie reviews on Fridays. That's a wrap on this episode of Purple Daily. Thanks for hanging out with us, and we'll see you next time.